dei campioni. Come pure il Rapid di Rienna a confronto con i francesi del Nantes ha ottenuto un 3-0 abbastanza rassicurante. Il primo gol, ecco, c'è l'arbitro che decide di assegnare un calcio di punizione di seconda perché il portiere del Nantes ha passeggiato letteralmente nell'area di rigore e quindi c'è un calcio di punizione indiretto che sarà battuto un metro più in là del dischetto, siamo a una dozzina di metri dalla linea di porta. Crankl che chiede all'arbitro informazioni sul tipo di punizione che sta per far battere, si tratta di una punizione di seconda nella quale il Rapido di Vienna sfrutta nella maniera migliore le grandi doti di tiratore del cecoslovacco Panenka che ormai da due anni milita nella formazione viennese e che segna appunto il primo gol al diciottesimo minuto del primo tempo, 1-0 in vantaggio i campioni austriaci sui campioni francesi del Nantes. Un gran bel tiro e rivedendo dalla posizione dietro la porta si vede che c'è lo spostamento anche di un giocatore, l'ultimo giocatore in maglia bianca in barriera, che crea un ulteriore varco a vantaggio del compagno Panenka che sta per tirare. Ecco, vedete, si abbassa e scopre proprio l'angolo alto della porta di Bertrand de Man. Il secondo gol è ugualmente realizzato da Panenka, con questo splendido tiro dal limite dell'area, Panenka è veramente un gran tiratore, lo ha sempre dimostrato anche quando si è avuto occasione di ammirarlo nella nazionale cecoslovacca e conferma queste sue doti anche nel Rapid di Vienna, un giocatore maturo che ha raggiunto la trentina, ma ancora validissimo centrocampista. Ecco sull'appoggio, bello, molto bello il controllo a far seguire la palla e poi il gran tiro precedendo l'intervento dell'avversario, vedete il diagonale perfetto che va a infilarsi proprio nell'angolo rendendo vano il tuffo del portiere francese, lo rivediamo ancora, ecco il controllo e poi il tiro di destro. Il terzo gol viene nella ripresa, il punteggio del primo tempo è di 2 a 0 a favore del Rapido di Vienna, esultanza dei tifosi. Ed ecco ancora Panenka, protagonista, questa volta però soltanto nella fase d'avvio, della terza rete. Batte un calcio d'angolo, è il quinto minuto. La deviazione è incerta, un po' di confusione in aria. Arriva Agmair che era subentrato, riprende il tiro di Krankl respinto. E realizza il gol del 3-0 per il Rapid di Vienna sul NAM, sui francesi del NAM. Abbraccio anche con Crank, ecco rivediamo, la deviazione è piuttosto incerta, il pallone raccolto da Crank che tenta di trovare col sinistro la via della rete, c'è una serie di rimpalli che mettono definitivamente fuori causa il portiere, Agmair si avventa, rischia un po', evita addirittura anche il, il piede protetto di Berlino. Come si qualifica il Rapid di Vienna grazie al gol segnato fuori casa, vince per 1-0 con il gol di Crank al sesto minuto, ecco l'azione. Un cross basso da sinistra, il sinistro di Krankl che sbuca per i gol da distanza ravvicinata 1-0, aveva perso 2-1 a Praga contro il Bohemians e si qualifica quindi la formazione del Rapid di Vienna. <coughs> Rivediamo l'azione. <coughs> Sulla sinistra il cross radente, il traversone basso e Krankl che sbuca per realizzare. Rapid Vienna, that's the side built round three great players, the sweeper Herbert Weber and of course the great Czechoslovakian internationalist who's played over 60 times for his country and we've also seen him rather painfully score goals against Scotland Anton Penenka at number eight and of course the great Hans Krankel back from Spanish football now leading a great charge by Rapid both in the league and in Europe United are playing exactly the same team as played standard Liège that means they're based on experience Tommy Coyne, who's playing very well just now over the past couple of games for United, doesn't have the kind of experience required. So in comes Ralph Milne. Ralph Milne, who scored more goals for United in Europe than any other player, 11. And I'm sure if he did one tonight, uh, the manager and the rest of his colleagues would be extremely happy. Well, off we go, and the stadium is certainly far from full. Maybe that's not surprising, because last night Vienna enjoyed a carnival, like a mixture of uh, Hockmanet and Mardi Gras. And uh, I'm surprised at all that there are anybody here. They were up all night making a tremendous din. And one wonders if these supporters will cause the kind of uh, noise that can sometimes intimidate foreign teams. But United are playing with uh, a team full of experience. Certainly Jim McLean toyed with the idea of bringing on Tommy Coyne, whom he thinks has a great future in store for him, but Ralph Milne comes in, the man who scored more goals for United in European football than any other in the club.
scored for the season 11 and all. There's a referee, by the way, who refereed uh, United in Radnitsky Nish. And he was, I have to say, in a warning, hope it doesn't augur badly, he was one of the worst European referees I've ever seen. The pitch is in absolutely ideal conditions. It was covered by a tarpaulin last night because of the danger of a snowfall, and it is a bitterly cold evening. There's Panenka, whom we have seen scoring against Scotland in the past. Beautiful little dummy by Paul Sturrock. Now Bannon, both of whom played remarkably well for United on Saturday. That's not a bad ball. Look at David Dodds. Well, I think Sturrock, in fact, was asking for the header put back to him. Very ineffectual header by Dodds. He ought to have done better from that position. Right to the goal line and gets the corner kick. Very quickly taken. Panenka. Driving it forward. 35 years of age, Panenka. Lovely little dab forward, and that's a goal kick. And I think he ought to be annoyed with that finishing by Kranka. Notice Panenka. There he is on the left at the bottom of the picture. Panenka's ploy in any match is to hide for long periods and then suddenly erupt forth. There it is. <laughs> exactly that. Well, if you see Panenka coming in behind the ball, as I said, he skulks during a game and uh, his hit and runs are extremely dangerous. And he came with that really vicious shot just the wrong side of the pose, but, oh dear, that is a warning to United. Almost ten minutes gone. Still no scoring. Panenka. Very wide. Kinast. Only Paul Sturrock is in front of that. Ball is a great save by McAlpin. And the Austrian players were claiming that that had gone over the line. I think what United must worry about is the latitude they were given going into the box. Well, suddenly that attacker eluded all the cover. McAlpin getting right down to the post. Panenka inside. This is Kranka. Bringersbauer. Putting on the pressure. There's a good ball and McAlpin saves again. And look at the number of players who got in there. Keglevic almost putting that away. And United look woefully exposed there. Now oh, they tell me Panenka sometimes has a shot at goal from the corner flag. He hits it so hard. Well, that's curling a lot. No, he couldn't keep it in. That was Lena. Leo Lena and Jim McLean came to the touchline screaming at his defense. No wonder. Mr. McLean suffering temporary apoplexy. David Dodds lays it off well. There's Milne. Excellent play by Milne. Needs touch to the side and is. Now Bannon. Will he try the shot? He does. And Sturrock almost puts it away. That's better play by United. Sturrock intelligently, not pausing at all, coming up very quickly behind that shot. Breggers bar. Goff, again giving possession away.
Chinast. Vručič. Obviously, Weber will want to slip forward as well. The hit and run, Vručič. Looking menacing, but the shot isn't. So there's no scoring. A few brows being white, and there's no question about it that any time I've seen United abroad, Jim McLean has got them all to work hard. Sometimes there are one or two defects, but uh, they can never be faulted for work rate. Stunnock. Bannon. Well, if Bannon can get going on the left, I think he's disturbed the Austrians by his speed. The fullback there, uh, Lena coming across, looking slightly. They're stuck with a shot. It's a great goal. Oh, a superb goal. Well, I've seen Derek Stark hit them from there before in domestic football. But that is a superb shot which the goalkeeper and an excellent one, Feurer, had no chance with. Beautifully laid back there by Paul Sturrock. And watch this. I don't think Panenka could have done any better himself. Rattled in. And Feurer just that bit too late. And so, practically on the half hour, that is one of the most valuable goals that the United have ever scored in European football. That is a great start for them now. It lightens the load considerably, I'll tell you, that scoreline you've just seen. Breggers Bar. Well, not surprisingly, this crowd rather hushed. Stodok back, everybody's back in the penalty area. The entire 11 United players facing up to this corner kick. Round it goes, and there's a great save, and he's still got it. Suddenly there was a free header. Krankel coming in, it's a free kick now. And Hamish McAlpin showing great courage in this his 42nd appearance in European football for United. But how on earth did he get the free header like that? Certainly no offside. That should have been put away, but look. Beautiful little piece of gymnastics by Hamish, who has played more times in European football than uh, any current player at the moment in Scotland. Hegarty. Stark can't get it, there's Panenka. Trying to get it to that foot of his, and gratefully scooped up. <laughs> well, I think Otto Baric thought it might have gone in better than that. Someday we'll get a lip reader in to interpret these things for us. Well, that's not a bad ball. There's Bill. Now, you're going to run at them. There's Richard Goff on the outside. There's Bill. Hegarty. On to Sturrock. Two men covering Sturrock. Leaves Goff loose and Bannon. Virtually on the halftime whistle. This is Bannon. Oh, I think he's slipped more than anything. Tackle wasn't particularly strong. This is Brucic to Panenka. Half time whistle should go any second. Kevlovic. Now Lena. David Daly, that's a better, more solid header. Just one or two little casual moments for United. One or two players. 
Nearly again, Panenka. And just as well, he hasn't had the accuracy to match the venom of the shots this evening. Well, we've gone a full minute over the 45. Hegarty. Dodds. Lena. There's Stark. The whistle goes, but it's not for half time for the free kick. Panenka with it. Hovering menacingly and touched back as Krankel came in. Total lack of misunderstanding. And when is this halftime whistle going to go? We're two minutes beyond it, would you believe? For reasons I can't quite understand. And then it goes now. There he is, the man who I think did United an extreme disservice when they played in Yugoslavia. United are one up and just sit back and relish that goal again. Absolutely superbly conceived and brilliantly finished. This is a thing you'll love to see from a Scottish team abroad. Made everybody here sit up, take notice. United quite capable of scoring this uh, kind of goal in any game. But this was vital for them. And is that a marvellous sight with United now. One goal up at half time. And if they just keep the head, don't get too casual. I think the evening is going to work out successfully for them. Well, I would imagine in the second half, Rapid are going to be very aggressive indeed. And I'm sure they realize that more than anybody else because they do the research very thoroughly here that United have an amazing record away from home in Europe. In the last 13 games, they've only lost three. And uh, that is an incredible performance by, by Jim McLean's uh, team. I think uh, Rapid also slightly concerned about their total fitness because they've had a long break in the season and they haven't yet restarted the league championships. It's, it's done in two halves. Oh, that's way over. Well behind that, that's uh, Pregas Bar. Billy Kirkwood. Kirkwood just keeping it in, but in steps Keglevich. Weber. Who was strolling through the game until it was 1-0 uh, down, and then suddenly he's busting forward a great deal. Panenka. Well, I gave Penenka a great build-up for this game because I've seen him playing before and <laughs> to say that he has disappointed me is only in a technical sense. I'm delighted he's having a very mediocre night. There he is there. Certainly hasn't shown us the touches he has in the past. Maybe not surprising for a 35-year-old. Weber sliding all the way through and McAlpin who's in a marvellous night but really even in making that save one hopes that the United defenders in front of him give him, give him a much easier second half I mean he really saved the jerseys in that first 45 minutes and I think the referee will have to halt the play I don't know whether that's a sign of disgust or not well, Weber kicking it away, which is more accurate than they've done with the ball so far. Across the far side, and David Neri. Oh! So hard hit. Panenka. Far side. And that's over. It's a goal kick. 
Well, the pressure on right away, as I, I expected, and they are throwing high balls across this goal mouth. That man there has his left side down, but uh, I think that central defence will have to tighten up. Derek Stark scored that stunning goal. As good a goal as I've seen in Europe in a long while. Laid to the side, David Odds won't get that. Goff. Nice better play by Goff, did the right thing. Milne, away he goes. Looking for support inside. Bannon tries to get in. There's Stutter. There's Bannon. And the deflection, Stutter. That may have been hands, yes. Well, in pushing people forward, you see, Rafford have caused some gaps there, and United is a very team that could exploit it. Well, there's Panenka, almost in the right back position. Kina. Hegarty being turned. That's a good looking ball to Breggers Bar. Oh. Disastrous finish. Milne. It was a very slight ball. David Dodds might just pick it up. He does. Away he goes. He's got Stunnock on the left. That's Bannon coming up. Stunnock on the other side. Bannon. No, too many defenders. Now that's a threatening ball, Penenka. He's got acres of space. Oh, that's a good run by Krenkel. And Hegarty, free kick brought down there as Krenkel followed through. Notice how the two front runners set off in different diagonal directions, confusing the United defence. And we're getting a substitution now. Will Fox. Gerald Wilfer. That um, is signaling for something like good football, I hope. Could be misinterpreted. Well, that's a better touch. Well, that's all born of relying on the confident hands of a goalkeeper. Pass back under pressure like that. It's opened out to Sturrock. I think that was a ball intended for Eamon Bannon. The Yugoslav Brucic. And United haven't allowed this rapid defence to settle. Oh, that's a good ball inside all the same. Kevlovic. Buying for the opening and the shot. Penenka, rather weak, Sturrock up on his own, almost gets away with it. Back goes Milne. Pregasbar, very impressive player in right midfield. Oh, good interception there by Stark. Stark, one of the unsung heroes at uh, Tanadice. Very difficult to put a category to him, what kind of player he is. Something can score goals, can't he? Panenka. Hegarty. Intelligent header. Stark in again. What he's doing tonight is going around midfield, pounding forward in support of the attack, as you saw in that first half. Tackling very well. Corner kick. Well, as you can see from the clock, 15 minutes of the second half gone. And this is a very interesting, in fact, the free kick there. Very interesting situation. That's Panenka cuddling it away. And into the hands of Hamish McAlpin again, would you believe? Rather magnetize the ball tonight. Neri. And it's out. Ooh, they're mixing it. 
a little bit of frustration creeping in through the Austrian players and I think uh, a few words of advice to David Daly there from that dugout okay Glavich wants the return now Sturrock's way back well he won't be boasting about that kind of header Panenka, it's a beautiful ball again, and how did he miss it? Once again, the defence left it. Hamish McAlpin woefully exposed, and that was Keglovich. Well, watch the ball. Superb outside of the foot cross there by Panenka. They let it go. Look at golf ducking, and there was Keglovich just outside of picture. It might have been the sheer amazement of getting the opportunity which uh, caused him to miss it. Down to Dodds. Here's Banner. Sturrock is onside. Sliding into him. Well, Keglevich coming off. The Austrian crowd don't actually like this. So, Hagmeyer's on. Sturrock, a little bit of twisting there, and I think it's, yes, false throw, throw to Rapid. Weber. Well, wonder if he's slightly disappointed by that decision by Otto Baric to take him off. Weber. Malpas gets behind it. That's not a bad ball to David Dodds. Oh, he kicks his eye off it. Slight lapses in concentration. Now this is Bannon. Driving on. Head over the ball. You try to find Milne. Not quite enough. That's a brilliant clear. This is Hagmeyer. Known to be a very strong runner, and there's Richard Goff. To Mill. Oh, playing it a little too cleverly, Goff. Some slack play creeping into United. They must concentrate all the time. It's meant for Sturrock. Rapid using that square ball. Sturrock goes with the defender, who is Kina. Oh, but a kick was a little unfortunate. He didn't pick that up. That's Panenka. Richard Goff is behind it. And away goes Mill. Paul Sturrock there. Mill trying it on his own. Well, I thought he was going to penetrate right through the middle. Seems to hold back a bit eventually. There he is. He's had a very good night. Dodd slightly hesitating and the ball hitting his hand. Free kick. It's a bit of space there. Decides to fire it in and disappoints one, two, three, four rapid players, including, including the captain Crankle. It looks as if he could form it actually. There it is. It's in Weber, the equalizer. No, it's Hagmeyer. Hagmeyer it was. The substitute equalizes yet again a free header. Watch it. The United defense master that little chip across and no protection for the goalkeeper at all. 
any step and away from McAlpin with absolutely no chance so Hagmar the substitute makes it one all with uh, just under 14 minutes left that's a free kick this time no question about it just under 10 minutes before the final whistle And take a team. Very good header. They played around neatly. Oh, it's a great tackle again by Stark. He's played that role to perfection. Dodds give up. He was worried about the referee's whistle. Ruchic. That's a cross ball and they ought to have done better with it. United, quite frankly, have been on the rack against that kind of play. Now, Paul Sturrock on his own. Billy Kirkwood Stunnock inside Was a good run by Kirkwood David Dodds oh. Well I think he was surprised he got the opportunity And Stunnock annoyed that he didn't push it inside That was a, an ineffectual ending Now Crankle back Trying to find the ball Get his players going again Crankle picks it up, and he can't get a shot in, good covering by United that time, four minutes left, Panenka, that's a troubling ball, and a great save again, and it must be, that is the winner by Kranka, the Yugoslavian, 2-1, quite astonishingly, Rapid have fought back. Again, the cross ball doing all the damage. There's the man who put it in, Panenka. And no matter how manfully they defended there, with a superb save again by McAlpin down there, the break of the ball against United and Franca slot.